Okay, we're going to talk about how cells communicate. How do they send signals to one another, and how do we elicit a specific cellular response? So right away, you can see signaling pathways or cell communication is going to involve a signaling molecule. Signaling molecule is going to be recognized by a specific receptor protein. And then the receptor protein will undergo conformational change and induce signaling cascades. So we're going to be looking at phosphorylation of proteins, and these proteins are going to affect effector proteins. So it means this is where we're looking at cellular response. So a number of different events can happen in the cell, and here I just have a couple of examples. We could alter the met metabolism by activating an enzyme, or maybe we can change the gene expression by turning on a transcription factor, or maybe deactivating it. So it just really depends. But the signaling molecule is going to elicit a specific response. So now we wonder where exactly do these signals come from? So they could be coming from the environment, touch, and then we're looking at light. For example, plants are going to be responding to light. Even temperature can have an effect on the cell's behavior and uh, within the body as well. So your body cells can produce specific chemical messengers, and those chemical messengers are going to affect specific target cells. So here's epinephrine, the stress hormone that's released by adrenal glands. And it causes a fight or flight response. If you look at insulin, insulin is released by pancreatic cells and insulin is going to tell your cells to uptake glucose. And hormones such as testosterone and estrogen, they will also affect the gene expression. So what we want to understand here is that a cell has to have a specific protein receptor in order to respond to the signal because your cells are bathed by these different signals all around them, but not all cells are going to respond to all the signals at all times. So that means there has to be this specificity. A cell has to have a specific protein receptor in order to respond to that specific signal. Cells can regulate the level of reception by increasing or decreasing the number, the number of receptors that they have. So um, in upregulation, when they're trying to amplify the effect, um, usually they experience this low um, signaling molecule concentration. They're going to make more proteins and they would embed them in the membrane. So here's a cell and we say that the signaling molecules, there's just few of them, so we say low concentration. So it means this cell is going to produce a protein embedded in its membrane and they'll have more receptors so that way to ensure that every single signaling molecule is picked up by a receptor, so that we want to amplify the effect. Um, an example of this would be, let's say there has been um, a spinal cord injury and there's uh, neuron damage, um, neurons that innervate specific muscle cells, and um, so now these neurons do not release enough neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft, therefore muscle cells are going to embed more proteins, more receptor proteins to be able to pick up all the possible neurotransmitters so that these muscle cells can actually contract even though there's not enough neurotransmitters. So down regulation means the cell is going to try to suppress sensitivity. This membrane would actually fold and sort of engulf this receptor, bring it in, so this is called endocytosis, and is going to run through a lysosome, break down this receptor, and get rid of it. So it means we are suppressing sensitivity because there's too many uh, signaling molecules that are around. So for example, if you constantly release insulin into the blood, your cells may actually suppress sensitivity to insulin. and. Um, I and mean, we're talking about development of diabetes. Two types of cell receptors. The one that I just described in the first slide is called cell surface receptor. So here we have a cell surface receptor that is embedded in the membrane, and you can see it has extracellular domain to bind a specific signaling molecule. Now this signaling molecule most likely is going to be hydrophilic and also pretty large. You can see it does not cross the membrane directly because this is obviously a phospholipid bilayer, so no, no. So when this signaling molecule, hydrophilic signaling molecule, binds to the surface receptor, 
this receptor will undergo conformational change and induce signaling cascade and therefore you'll have an effect within the cell. Some examples of such molecules would be peptides, proteins, amino acids, and even nucleotides. So another type of receptor would be intracellular receptor. So these receptors are found within the cells. They are on the inside. So because signaling molecules are small, and they are hydrophobic and you now know that hydrophobic molecules can cross the membrane directly therefore the intracellular receptors can be found within the cytoplasm just in the cell or they can also be found within the nucleus as shown in the picture here so some examples of hydrophobic signaling molecules would be steroid hormones retinoids like vitamin a vitamin d so these would bind to receptors that are sitting within the nucleus and this nitric oxide gas uh, its receptor is within the cytoplasm. One signal can bind to different cells and elicit different responses. So this is a pretty cool concept because here is an example. We have acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter, and a neurotransmitter is going to be released in the synaptic cleft. Uh, whatever cell it innervates, it's coming from the neuron. And in this case, we have a heart muscle. So when the neurotransmitter is released in the synaptic cleft, this heart muscle cell is going to relax and we see the decreased rate and force of contraction. However, the same exact acetylcholine is now released into the synaptic cleft and this neuron is innervating skeletal muscle. So now you can see the skeletal, skeletal muscle, on the other hand, is going to do the opposite, is going to contract. And here's another example, salivary gland. So we can see acetylcholine is binding to salivary gland, and therefore salivary gland now is releasing exocytosing all these little vesicles that contain digestive enzymes. So there's actually two different or two major signaling mechanism categories. So we're looking at local signaling and also long distance. So an example of local signaling would be juxtacrine. So this involves direct contact, so it means cells are not, so we can see the signaling cell is not releasing any signaling molecules. Instead, they have a signaling molecule attached within its membrane and they make direct contact with the target cell. So this type of pathway is really important when it comes to development of the organism. So early stages, think we've got few cells and cells divide, 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 then you have to differentiate. So it means one cell is going to tell a cell that's nearby next to it what it needs to become. That's how we get the development of all these different cells and tissues and then tissues becoming organs. Paracrine signaling, on the other hand, involves diffusion. And you can see a signaling cell releases little signaling molecules and they are gonna diffuse short distance and reach the target cells. So this would be, a um, good example of this would be when we look at immune cells and how they talk to one another. We'll revisit that concept for illustrative examples. Synaptic signaling involves a neuron and you can see neuron, as we discussed previously, releases neurotransmitters into synaptic cleft. And this is your target cell that has receptors. So this target cell is going to respond accordingly. And then the last one here is long distance signaling. So this is basically endocrine system because we have bloodstream, we've got blood vessels and the cells are gonna be releasing hormones. Hormones go into the blood, they circulate throughout the blood, and then eventually they reach the target cells and those target cells are going to respond accordingly. So think about pituitary gland released uh, human growth hormone. Human, human growth hormone went into the blood and reached the target cells. Now your cells are going to begin dividing and therefore you're going to see the organism is actually growing because it's making more cells. Next, we're gonna discuss steps that are involved in cell signaling.